am here with Foxy the Pomeranian. Foxy is an older Pomeranian. It has been about eight weeks since her last appointment, and she has a lot of packed in undercoat. Luckily, her owner does not wash her in between professional grooming appointments. This really helps to keep the packed in undercoat from matting. If the packed in undercoat gets wet, then it will mat, and then it will be very difficult and painful to get out. So she has quite a bit more packed in undercoat than I typically like to see. She's a very sweet little dog, and I love her a lot. When I first started grooming her, she was very apprehensive about being brushed. She would not let me anywhere near the the neck or head or behind the ears with a brush. Apparently, she had had some bad experiences with people pulling on her hair. And she finds this technique very acceptable. So as I work, I push the hair out of the way, holding the long hair up with one hand, creating a line, and then picking from the skin out with the brush. I keep working over a certain area until I can see skin in that line. If I cannot see the skin, then I'm not finished brushing. Because of her bad back, I allow her plenty of freedom of movement. If she wants to lay down, stand up, turn around, I understand that her back problems can cause her stiffness and pain. So I tend to be very careful with her and allow her to decide where she wants to move. So you can see here how I'm starting to see skin under there, which means I'm doing good at removing that coat. As I move on to the next area, you can see how thick that hair is and how you cannot see skin now. So I'll just keep picking at this new area. While she's quite wet, the dryer is on warm. As I move towards the end and I start with the combing, then I will turn the blow dryer completely on cool and that will just give me the airflow to see where I'm going under all that hair. So you can see how packed in it is there. The longer hair I use the pin brush on, but when sometimes when I get into this shorter, thicker hair on the fronts of the back legs and through the shoulders, and on the front legs, I will switch to a slicker brush for those shorter areas. Because the pin brush will just slide right over the top of that short, thick, condensed hair. So now I'm gonna go to a slicker brush to get that shorter area. I use different brushes for different areas of the coat. She's always checking in with me. She'll stare straight into my eyes as I work. I'm going to lay her down so she's more comfortable. You can see how long her pants are. This is just a long, tedious process. <laughs> She's getting comfortable. I praised her for that. I like that. Praise can be verbal or just a gentle touch. You 
can see how much loose hair is flying off of her as I brush. It's just flying into the room. The hair across her back is so packed in and thick. A dog like this really should be done every four weeks professionally. Eight weeks is too long, but they live quite a distance away from me and they will not take her to anybody else. And they have two small children and a new baby, so it's completely understandable. Life happens. She's so sweet. I just love her. So I'm feeling to see where it's still real thick and where I need to move next. So I'm still using the line brushing technique. One hand holding up the hair, and the other with the brush getting from the skin out. She's changing positions. That's okay. I'm asking her to come back into me so I can start working on this side. See how packed that is? Just see the hair flying. If you tried to use a firmer brush on this, one of the harder, slicker brushes, you would find that this dog would act like it's absolute torture. But because of this procedure that I am using, she's not opposing at all. While I'm using short, quick motions with the brush, I'm not using any hard firmness. It's a very light, quick touch. So her shoulders are really packed. Hair is just flying everywhere. So we'll just continue on with the whole brushing process working over every inch of her body. The shorter areas around the shoulders and front legs, I switch to a slicker brush. This is an Artero double-sided slicker, the medium size. 
I like this brush because it's flexible and more comfortable for a dog. It has a firmer side and a softer side. In this area, I am using the firmer side. She has a little skin tag there. I'm just looking at it and making sure what it is. Honestly, if you did not use the line brushing technique on one of these, you would have a very difficult time getting the undercoat brushed out. If you start on the outer coat and just brush over the top, you'll do absolutely nothing. It's really important to go from the skin out. You would be shocked if you used a firmer brush on her to see the difference in her behavior. She becomes very oppositional if she does not like the brush. So if your dog really fights you on brushing, try different tools. There is a wood pin brush that many dogs will accept the Madden pin brush, the Chris Christensen pin brush, or the Artero pin brush, they are all good. So back to the stiffer brush for the shorter hair. Up underneath, the coat is really packed in. It's important to clean your brush out periodically. It'll do a much better job if there's not a lot of hair packed into the brush. I like it when they lay down and relax as I'm working on them. So now I'm going to start on the top of her back where it's really packed in tight.
Looks like it's snowing with all the loose hair flying around. It's a little hard to breathe with all that hair. So when she needs to change positions, I just start working on a different area. Rather than making her stay in one position. Whatever area she presents to me is what I'll work on. As much as possible. So we're currently 17 minutes into the blow dry. Her appointment time is one hour. On a dog like this, the bulk of the work is the wash and blow dry. And the trimming is minimal. And the price is the same for a dog like this as a dog that gets a full hand scissor because of the work. It's just as much work, but more work is spent on the wash and blow dry than on the trim. So this is a full groom. So there, I didn't try to hold her, but now I'm asking her to come back to me. So that area is still very thick with packed in hair. So back to the slicker brush on the shorter area on the front of the leg. That short, thick hair goes all the way up towards the flank area of the dog. So you follow all the way up from the lower leg all the way up the front of the leg with the stiffer brush. using long sweeping motions going through this longer hair on the back of her legs. The hair is still wet underneath. So now it's time to turn the dryer down. 
so that it's cool air. Don't want her to get too hot with all this hair. She really hates the back of her neck being brushed. That could be because of her back injury. Or it could be past experience. But I just do a little, move to something else, and then go back and do a little, move. I try not to focus there for too long. Bring this up close to the dog so that you can see exactly where I'm working and exactly how thick that hair is. Brush. This brush has really long pins and they're not as stiff as the regular Artero brush. So I'm going to go over her with this brush and this will help to lift out a little bit more of that shedding hair that the pin brush left behind and it will also fluff the coat more. Using the same line brushing technique, going from the skin out, I need to get to a certain area, so I'm turning her. Most of my Pomeranians do come in every four weeks, and that is highly recommended. Ooh, she didn't like that. That tugged a little bit. Now I'm getting the stink eye. She's like, you or me, you tugged my hair. So now she's mad at me about the brush. But I like this brush, it's not stiff at all. It's a little too stiff for the first layer of brushing with the pen brush. But for the second layer of brushing, this one is good. And that's what I meant by layering down my brushes. I start with the one that has the least resistance and I move up to one that is a little firmer. And you can now see when the air is blowing on her how easy it is to see skin where that air is making a crease in her hair. I'm going to lay her down to get her underside. I scratch her chest as I lay her down to help her to stay there. Now 
ask her to lay down again. Hopefully. That's a good girl. <laughs> She's so sweet. They always give me their thank yous. They understand when you're good with them. Even if it is a lot of work. It feels good to get scratched down on the skin. To get all that extra hair out of there. When I first started grooming her, if you would brush up around the back of her head, she would scream. Just at the thought of the brush going there. And it's hard to believe now. So as I'm petting over her, I'm feeling where it's still wet at the same time as praising her. I'm having to hold her up. She's going to fall down. <laughs> fall asleep. So I'm feeling for any dampness. So she knows it's getting to be time to go to the back of her head. Sometimes they have memories of having knots brushed out from behind their ears. See how she whips around? Just takes one time to give them a memory of something they don't like. So she's avoiding by her body language. But she's not overreacting. You can see it in her eyes. She's like, no, you're not going to brush there. I'm like, okay, I'll brush here instead. And then I'll sneak back up there. Sneak in a couple more strokes. She's like, I'm on to your game. I know where you're going. So you're giving me that stink eye. I'm asking her to come back. She's like, okay. But I know what you're going to do to me. You're going to brush my head. So rather than arguing, I'm using my fingers to dry her ears, just rubbing her ears dry right now. Sneaking the brush back in. There. That's the whole idea of her throwing her head up and back like she does. She's avoiding it. So now I'm rubbing her face dry. Just using my fingers to move around the hair. And as I move around the hair with the air blowing on it, it will dry quickly. If I leave it to itself without doing this, it won't dry quickly. It'll take all day. So that hair just needs to be moved so the air can get in there. 
and it feels good. So to her, this is praise. She's like, oh, this feels nice. I'm getting a facial. All right. So now I'm going to use the face comb. This is a Chris Christensen face comb. It's a five inch comb. It has a super fine side and a super, super fine side. So you want to use the wider section near the whiskers because whiskers can get caught in the finer side. And I'm just going to use a picking action going over this really short, thick hair in her muzzle, between her eyes, her cheeks, the top of her head. And the ears, possibly. Sneaking in a few more swipes on the area she doesn't like. She's more accepting of the little comb up there than she is the brush, so that tells you she has a bad memory of that kind of brush being in that area. This is the most important part of the entire process. If you do not do this part, your dog will still be matted. And actually, if you wash your dog and do the entire brushing, but don't follow up with this picking it out with the comb, the dog will end up matted. And you can say, but I just washed it and I brushed it for an hour. And what do you mean it's gonna mat? Well, if you don't go through this final process, this final phase, and get that last bit of loose hair out, that's the hair that's gonna mat in there and it's gonna create a problem. So there where I couldn't get the brush to go through or the comb to go through long ways, I turned it up on end and used one prong of the comb to try to pick it out. When I do that again, I'll point it out. Alright, so the comb's sliding through there very nicely. The idea is to get it to where I don't have to do the picking. See how I'm picking it? When I can eventually slide that comb from the skin out without having to pick at it, I'll be finished with this process. So I've turned the comb up on end and I'm using one prong to loosen that up. And if that's not going to work, then I brush it. She's very tender headed, so she's getting more agitated that I'm using this, but it must be done. So now the comb's going through easier and move to another section. Just calming her. Casking her down. She'll be more comfortable if she stays in place. This would have been a much more... Um, 
comfortable process had she been done in four weeks instead of eight. The amount of extra undercoat removal, removing all the packed in undercoat has made this much more stressful than it needed to be. So we'll just keep working, keep picking. The comb is starting to go through her coat much easier now. And you can see how much hair is still coming out. There's much less resistance. That's much, oops, she didn't like that one. She's starting to get a little frustrated and I don't blame her, but I can't stop now. We're almost there. You can see now I can slide the comb from the skin out, from the skin out, and that's what I want to see. See how it comes all the way through with very little stress. being so sweet. Okay, now it's time to trim the pads of her feet. I'm going to use a 40 blade. I'm not going to dig in, just going to skim off the top. As you can see, her coat still looks quite rough. It's all brushed and combed through, but she still looks quite unkempt. So we're going to give her a nice trim up, give her some shape. Because that's just a little overabundance of coat. All right, the pads of her feet are done. I'm using a seven blade on a Shermbeo digital clipper. I'm going to trim under her tail and in her private areas to help her stay clean. She is a pet dog, not a show dog. If she were a show dog, I may leave all that hair, but for a pet, I want to keep her nice and clean for her family so she doesn't get stinky. Show dogs, we would leave that hair, but we would take extra, extra precautions to keep it clean all the time. House pets just don't need all that. I like to trim the little extra fluff off the inside of the ears. If it were a show dog, I would do it a little differently. Okay. 
I'm getting out my finer tooth Utsumi comb. And as soon as I finish scissoring around her feet, get the long hair off her toes. We are 48 minutes into a one hour appointment. Actually, if you count the bath time, we are 55 minutes in. Now I'm going to take a blocking blade. This is an Andis blocking blade. And I'm going to find a good coat conditioner for her to spray on before I start trimming with the blocking blade. I'm going to go with the Artero Flash. Mist it over her coat. Lightly comb her hair. There's no need to sink my comb in deep at this point. I've already done all that. The coat, comb is already prepared, or the coat is already prepared for the clipping. I'm going to take my blocking blade and skim off the long hair that I do not want to keep. I like the blocking blade for this because it gives a very natural look. It just allows me to draw in the shape off the top of the coat. I use it just like a pencil drawing. You have to be very careful angling in like this not to catch the hawk. This blade is very sharp, works like scissors, and it will cut a dog, so you have to be very careful about what you're doing. Same thing around the ears. You have to be terribly careful. I'm just going to skim that long hair off into a nice shape. Every time I hear about a serious grooming accident, I always wonder if they're using a blocking blade. It's not a beginner's tool. I never get this blade anywhere near skin. It's always way, way out off skin. The flash conditioner is very lightweight, which is why I like it on a Pomeranian coat. As 
scissor the edges of her ears. Sometimes Pomeranian's ears can get quite out of control with the hair. You can see it sticking up off the other one. to turn her and do the same thing to the other side. I'm going to use my curved scissors and just round out her back end. I'm going to fan the hair out in a big circle. I want this to be in balance with her mane. want her tail to sit on high so I don't want any hair um, making her tail look like it's further down than it's supposed to be. I like it to look like it's sitting up nice and high. And the hair can give you an illusion that it doesn't. Using my curves backwards here, I can create that underline. She's getting tired. She's ready for a nap. So I'm just gonna put on a few little finishing touches and I'm gonna let her go rest. sure her ears are balanced. And remember, this is the area she does not like work done. Saw some hair sticking out where it wasn't supposed to around her feet. So I'm just double checking everything. I think we 
are done. So we're going to say goodbye. Say goodbye, Foxy.